RN, your world unfolding. Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual abdominal liposuction. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be assisting you with this surgery today. To be a good candidate, one must usually be over 18 years old, in good general health, be within 30% of their ideal weight, and have made an honest attempt at losing weight through dieting and exercise with little success. Now that we've covered the basics, let's scrub in. Oh, and this interest in the body, it's just gripped you for decades. Well, I've kept trying to let go. Have you? And uh, yes, I, I, I was convinced after I wrote Fifi, Fat is a Feminist Issue, that I had said everything I had to say. And then when I wrote Hunger Strike, and I was really shocked that I felt the need to write bodies to say what I thought was going on in the world at this particular moment. People come into therapy with all sorts of issues, whether they're bereavement or difficulties with children or partners or job loss. And what's really changed is that they talk about their bodies as being a place of sorrow or difficulty, but they have no expectation of being able to change it. 20 years ago, people came in and said, I've, I'm in difficulty with my eating, I'm in difficulty with my body, I mm. need help for it now. It's, hey, this is just part of what life is. It's like gravity. And that really perplexed and troubled me and made me think the place of the body is both so big and so ungettable hold of. Mm. And we're doing damage really from day one to the next generation because we're inadvertently passing on body anxieties. Why do you want us to take our bodies simply for granted? Well, can you imagine how lovely that would be if your body was something that you got up in the morning, you brushed your teeth, washed your face... And there wasn't a view, which I think is what's very, very difficult now, always looking at yourself critically, whatever you're doing. From, I mean, you could be a very accomplished violinist or um, doctor or sports person, and there would still be this thing of how am I appearing rather than how just simply living from, the, from our bodies. And I think that's been very difficult. Why is this a taken for granted difficulty? Is because you've got the generational transmission. You've got young women or, and mothers, and fathers now increasingly, so inclined to body preoccupation that it's not just coming from the outside in society. It's not just coming from the billboards and the videos and the advertising and the fashion industry. It's seeped into the making of parents. If you eavesdrop on a conversation with women who are expecting babies, uh, their preoccupations are about their body size and how fast they're going to get their body back as though pregnancy is something you, um, you have to do away with the evidence of having produced a baby immediately so that there's some terrible, horrible pressure, mainly coming from celebrity culture, so that at six weeks people have been doing sit-ups and thinking that they need to look like fashion models rather than mums who are trying to get to know the rhythm of their babies. And I think that anxiety about the mother's body seeps into that very early mother-child relationship. In what way does it do that? I can't fathom what it would be like to be a little girl under 10 worrying about well, my body. How do we put together the evidence that 50% were conscious of their body difficulties before 13. So where on earth is that coming from? Where is, I mean, there are children's games that are about plastic surgery and buying tokens, internet games at five and six. It's control of food. The idea that food is itself dangerous, dangerous, naughty. There's also photoshopping of baby pictures so that actually one's erasing the real picture of the child either by when you're a toddler inserting little dimples or gaps between the teeth. People are going to push back at this conversation and say, but I love the kind of performative aspect of putting on makeup, of attending to my body. It's my domain of control and I have fun paying I wish attention we only to my fun. aesthetics. I wish there was real pleasure. The pleasure, it seems to me, for an awful lot of us now, comes from getting on top of body distress and prettifying or making ourselves feel, oh, God, doesn't this look great? Or don't I feel good in this? Rather than starting from a neutral base and being able to decorate yourself, which is something that human culture has always done. We've always decorated ourselves. But now it's a kind of 
relentless decorate yourself in a form that is quite limiting that is i look at this moment it's straight hair it's very tall it's very big breasts it's it's very slim hipped it's almost like we're binding our bodies and then when we can sort of bind our feet but they're actually our whole bodies then we can feel okay because we've done the right thing and i don't think it's that conscious and i agree with you there's lots of pleasures to be had but i think there could be pleasures that don't start in a morning where you're feeling bad about your body or you're checking in with yourself what about men this is like another source of tragedy if you look at the abercrombies ads or you look at burberry ads it's really impossible not to see that the young men are being invited by the camera to present themselves or the art directors in exactly the same sort of one vulnerable but kind of tough look that is both approachable and unapproachable that we've seen for the last 25 30 years it's that bulk up get big be strong be muscly that's always been there and then it's also get skinny get really skinny get way too skinny so you can fit into those little hipster pants there are boys in serious difficulties with eating problems, with cutting themselves, with drastic attempts to reshape their bodies. And sometimes you can see more clearly what we do to ourselves, what the girls and women are doing, by looking at what's happening in a new territory, like a pen. You see, I think it's very hard because we all live in a culture. You can't extract yourself. So who you are is a result of your conversation with the culture that you're part of. And I think that's the same with the food industries, the fashion industries, and the diet industries. They are already inside of our world. Consumerism is the ads that, that are on the telly all the time or on the screens are things that kids just grow up with. But you make the point that things like the dieting industry mm -hmm. make a, a kind of cast themselves as benevolent, helpful, helping them help ourselves. Mm. How insidious is that for you? It's so vicious. When we had a parliamentary inquiry in the UK uh, early last year, Weight Watchers were forced, to, and I take them as just a, an emblematic of the diet industry because they're so damn successful. Mm. Their results showed that the greatest weight loss that was actually conceivable for most of their people who came was five kilograms, and it wasn't sustained for more than two years. So that's on the record as part of that inquiry, mm. which is actually then part of the rationale behind the Ditch the Diet campaign yeah. underneath the umbrella of the Endangered mm -hmm. Bodies campaign. Whose bodies are endangered? Well, I think all of our bodies are endangered. I think because of this kind of global body that we're all meant to have now, whether we're in China or Australia or London, that the image of the body is changing and that we're losing bodies as fast as we're losing languages, actually. We're being encouraged and invited to enjoy reshaping our bodies so they look like this body that we see all around us. A new form of colonialism is I, how you I, describe it. I do it, think really? it is a new form of colonialism. I do think what women's bodies, and I, I really don't want to exempt what's going on for men now, but are being mined for profit, like we are a commodity, like we're gold or iron ore. I spoke at the UN last year, at UN Women, and it was really very shocking to meet women from Sudan and South Sudan and Thailand and India talking about the robbing of civil society because the young women there are so preoccupied with body engagement that at the moment of when education is actually happening, they are withdrawing from possibilities because they feel their body's abject. Governments have become uh, quite mobilised and quite yeah. distressed by uh, obesity. Yes. I think if you're going to have an aesthetic of thinness and you're going to have food companies increasing their profits by segmenting them, so that on the one hand you sell, sell the f food where you've taken out all the fat and you've put in plasticizers or lots of sugars and then you sell it back as a luxury good at the other or as a treat, you actually destabilise the ordinary relationship to hunger and the satisfaction mm. of it. And then if you add in the whole construction of the notion of obesity as a disease, which has happened ever since the World Health Organization, which um, brought in this International Obesity Task Force, which was an industry-led task force and was paid for by industry, and you create the whole idea of the BMI, 
which was body mass index. Something that, did you grow up with body mass index or did you grow up with small, medium and large frame? And I suppose my outstanding example is George Clooney. You think he's obese? He's in the obese category. So we need to be really careful. That's not to say there isn't an obesity issue, but we need to be careful about quite the numbers and where that falls. Mm. And I, I suppose I'm very worried about the demonization on the one hand of, of, of people who are very large and the fact that whatever is offered to them is done on a dietary basis. It isn't actually done on a psychological basis. Mm. And the links between one's own eating problems, maybe, or feelings about bodies or, or, or distressed body image, which are there for so many, many people, are also there for people who are large. We need to look at the development psychologically of the body itself, of how we get a body stability and a body corporeality. And in today's age, how our body distress is actually causing mental problems. It's not just mental problems causing body problems. From day one, from, yes. from so, so the that, very so beginnings of our body. So that's part of what I've been arguing and what I argue about in bodies. RN, your world unfolding. <laughs>